lessons online. Okay, we're moving on to the next part of Human Geography Team 2.1. I'm going to look looking at your next um development indicator. Okay, this is going to be your multi-dimensional poverty index. Okay, in short, MPI. All right, so your MPI is very similar. Okay, somewhat similar to your HDI. It does look at several um similar factors as well. Okay, so we're going to dive into exactly what are the different dimensions that MPI will look at and what exactly it means. All right. So the definition of MPI is very, very simple. It basically means, okay, I mean, or at least, okay, it identifies what are the different deprivations of people in terms of health, in terms of education, and in terms of standard of living. Okay, so it looks at different factors, okay, such as nutrition, child mortality, years of schooling, living standards, and more. Okay, we'll look at exactly what the index, uh, what proportion of what are the different factors supposed to be um, of this index later on. Okay, but essentially this is what it revolves around. So it reflects the incidence of M, uh, multi-dimensional poverty um, and its intens intensity in a country. Okay, what do I mean by this? Um, it basically states, okay, what um, need, or at least to what extent, okay, based on this poverty level, okay, would determine how intense um, your poverty is within that country itself okay so it, that's basically what it measures um it measures the incidence okay when there is a high level of poverty and and um if so okay how intense okay is the poverty um in that country supposed to be like okay so it looks at the percentage of people who live in multi-dimensional property okay so usually mpi tends to look towards the percentage okay, instead of having something solid okay a solid number okay and you look at usually when you look at mpi you look at the um in terms of in terms of um comparing okay within countries okay what is the different mpi um levels within different countries as well as what is the difference in how poverty levels are like um when you compare it amongst different countries Alright, so if we move on after this, okay, this is basically what your multi-dimensional poverty index scale looks like. So essentially what it does, okay, is it combines different factors and each factor of health, education, as well as living standards, each take up one third each. Okay, so it's one third, one third, one third, you add up, you get these dimensions of poverty. So within health itself, okay, it splits itself into nutrition as well as child mortality. Um, on the other hand, for education, okay, you're looking at the years of schooling as well as what is the school attendance. Okay, and then for living standards, you're looking at do they have cooking fuel? Okay, are they able to sanitize themselves? Okay, do they have proper access to sanitation? Um, what is the presence of drinking water there? Okay, do they have clean water to drink? Okay, do they have electricity to go about doing their daily um, necessities? Okay, do they have good housing? And what are the assets they have okay, in terms of monetary assets okay, or any other form of assets that they hold? Okay, so this is what MPI looks like. It combines the different aspects of health, education, living standards to form this MPI. Alright, so what are some of the benefits of MPI? So remember, similar to HDI, okay, we're looking at your evaluation for these two indicators. Always, everything always boils down to your um, evaluation. So benefits, okay, firstly, it captures distinct and broader aspects of poverty. So MPI is targeted towards poverty only. Okay, so you're not looking at wide-scale development across the country. You're looking specifically at poverty, which is why it's multidimensional poverty index so when you look at mpi okay, you're looking at a lot of all aspects of poverty things like their standard of living their health their education all this will determine whether people are actually still going to be stuck in poverty or whether they're going to be able to get out of it or or what um are the levels okay, of their living standards which determines the fact that they are in poverty so it also captures the cause of deprivation directly um so the causes okay it does also indicate right so things like health which is lacking or either that living standards, certain living standards are lacking, okay, these are what will be um, um, the, what MPI captures, okay, it captures all these causes, so your health and education outcomes, okay, it also reviews great variations in poverty levels within countries. So within countries itself, okay, there could be varying levels of um, poverty, okay, so for instance, a certain city or a certain um, area of a country within Africa, for example, Nairobi, okay, could have a higher, um, MPI as compared to another country, I mean, or another city within within Africa itself. So when you're looking at within countries, okay, you can actually tell um, what the different levels of poverty are. 
okay and you can from there assess okay which areas are lacking in terms of their health education and any sort of living standards okay so this is good for comparison as well okay mpi um is a good uh way to compare Okay, so then what are some limitations that it has? Okay, so some limitations that MPI has would be that there are still many facets of poverty that the index actually does not cover. Okay, for instance, you have got conflicts, personal security, domestic violence. Okay, these are certain things which may still occur within your um, areas of poverty, okay, especially things like domestic violence, but where we don't actually measure it. Okay, we measure a lot of very tangible things like health, your education, your standard of living. Okay, those are the things that we were actually looking at instead over here. So we don't exactly touch based on everything. Okay, not only that, okay, some locations also do not have recorded MPI. So certain areas which are more closed off, okay, they can't exactly measure or that they 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 simply just do not access those areas to measure MPI. Okay, as a result, um these areas do not have MPI values, which means that it may not exactly be um entirely comparable amongst every city state or either every country okay because not everyone will have this mpi index okay for instance if you look at some uh, more developed nations as well okay, they may not also have recorded mpi reason being is because poverty is so low so it's very hard to measure it to begin with all right so what are some of the exam requirements for this part so very simply you'll be able to explain and define what mpi is so what are the certain um, indicators of mpi what are the different aspects that it goes through so mainly your education your health as well as living standards and then not only that okay be able to explain what um sorry give me a second okay yeah be able to explain um the pros and cons okay of using this as an index okay when you use mpi as an indicator okay to measure development okay will it actually be successful okay maybe across the world not really okay because um you know it not poverty doesn't exist in, in i mean it does exist okay but it's on a very very small scale in a lot of developed nations so perhaps mpi can only be used to compare poverty levels within a less developed nation itself or did it amongst developed na- uh, less developed nations okay but it may not be able to use mpi to measure across everywhere Okay, so explain what the pros and cons of using MPI to measure development levels across the world could be. Alright, so if not, that's actually all for this part on MPI. It's very, very similar to HDI. Okay, but HDI, you realize it's more on a global scale. Okay, MPI is very, very specific. You're looking at poverty. HDI, you could cover poverty. You can also cover other areas of development, the higher levels of development. So Human Development Index covers a lot more on based towards um, societal living standards as well as um, what your GDP, okay, your GNI for that country is, which shows your economic growth. So it's a very, very macro scale as compared to MPI, which focuses on a very, very small scale, looking specifically at poverty in this case. Okay, so if not, that's all I have for this video. Okay, if you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like. As well as to subscribe to the channel, it does help me out a lot. Um, that is actually all we have. So for your indicators, okay, we still have your MDGs and SDGs, which I'll be going through the next part. So stay tuned for that. If not, if you have any questions, leave in the comment section below and I will answer them as well. Alright, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next.